Okay everyone, we're back with video number three, transmitter setup. We're going to start from where we left off, um, scroll down to transmitter, hit the S button. Now that brings you to this live screen. This screen is representative of what the vortex is seeing from your transmitter. So what we're going to accomplish in transmitter setup is servo centering, um, servo direction and reversing if we need to, and endpoint adjustments in all the channels. So if you've taken all the preparations uh, for transmitter setup, then we should be ready to go. What we're going to do here first is do servo or channel centering. So um, we need to get the pitch stick right into the middle and um, we will do that with the assistance of the pitch curve. Uh, look at the input value, make that a 50 and the uh, pitch indication on the live screen should indicate a 0% which it does. You'll notice the far right side of the live screen there is a square with a ball or a dot in the middle. Um, that is your cyclic viewing area and that is representation of what your cyclic stick is doing. You can basically consider that ball your uh, cyclic stick. As you can see when I move it around, it moves around. Same thing with the rudder, there's a ball for that, shows when it's centered, shows when you move it left and right. Same thing with the pitch stick. Okay, so let's focus on the numbers there that you see. In the cyclic viewing area, there's a percentage. It's 0% for one of them and minus 1% for the other. That's um, where it shows that the uh, elevator stick is not centering properly. So we need to get into our sub trim menu, go to the elevator channel, and adjust that so you get a 0%. and there I got zero. If you have any values other than zero percent for aileron, elevator, rudder, and pitch, you'll need to adjust those right now. Uh, use sub trim to make them all centered. So we'll get out of that and now we will go to uh, servo direction. So we'll get into the reverse screen in case we have to reverse anything. Right now we're going to check the pitch channel. That's the collective stick. So watch that pitch area the ball will turn into an arrow as we move the collective stick up. You can see that it turned into an up arrow and it traveled to the right. As we move it back down towards center, it turns into a ball when we get to center, and then it turns into a down arrow as we go to low stick, and the percentage shows a negative. So a negative percentage with a arrow pointing down for low stick, a positive percentage and an arrow pointing up for high stick that's exactly what we want. If you have a low arrow or an arrow pointing down while you're at high stick, that's an opposite indication. Same thing, if you're at low stick, you have an arrow pointing up, that's opposite. You need to reverse the direction for pitch. Okay, but in this case it's proper, so we're not going to reverse anything. Let's move on to the rudder channel. We'll move the rudder stick to the left and watch the ball okay it's moving the wrong way it's moving to the right it's giving us a little right arrow we move it to the right it's moving to the left so we know for sure that the direction of the rudder channel needs to be reversed so we'll go ahead and do that and now we'll try left rudder we get a left indication right rudder we get a right indication so now that direction that channel is moving properly Let's move to the cyclic area. So we'll move um, elevator forward and we get a forward indication which is proper. See the ball follows the stick. So we know elevator is proper. Let's give it left aileron. Okay, we get it going to the right. It's backwards. Um, right aileron, the ball goes the opposite direction. So we need to reverse the aileron channel just like that. Now we'll give left aileron, ball moves to the left, right moves to the right. So let's just verify everything. Forward cyclic, back, the ball follows, that's what you want it to do. Left rudder, 
goes the proper direction, right rudder, same thing. Positive collective, the arrow goes up. Negative collective, arrow goes down. For the throttle channel, um, if that was acting opposite, you could reverse the throttle channel as well. So now we go to endpoints. Um, let's work with pitch. We will move the collective stick all the way up. We notice that we get a 95%. So we need to go into the endpoint or travel adjust menu, go over to pitch, and increase that value until the data pod shows 100%. So you can see it moving up, and there's 100. Uh, move the collective stick to the bottom. You can see that we don't have 100% on the vortex, so we'll increase that travel adjustment until we get 100. There we go. We do the same thing for the other channels. Um, let's do rudder right now. We'll move the rudder stick and hold it to the left, and look what we get, a 94%. So we need to increase that endpoint until it gets to 100 and there you go. We'll hold that rudder stick to the right and again we need to increase the endpoint till we get to 100. Right there. Let's do the same thing for the cyclic stick. Let's do elevator. We're going to hold forward elevator. Look what we get, 96 percent. So we will increase the endpoint until it reaches 100. Right there we'll hold the elevator stick down and we will do the same thing increase the endpoint until it gets to 100 right there the throttle stick um, it's showing a positive 2 um, let's calibrate the throttle um, hold it to the bottom uh, bottom stick for zero throttle and adjust that until it gets to a zero percent right there. Now we'll put it at full stick, so full throttle. We're getting less than 100% on throttle, so we will adjust that until we get 100%. And there. Um, that's it for endpoint adjustments. One last thing we need to do is we need to uh, look at that gyro section at the bottom. That's the flight mode switch. And this is where we talked about it in um, transmitter preparation. We'll go to the governor menu on my radio since that's the way I have it set up. Okay, so initially when you get into your governor screen or your gyro screen, all the values will probably be zero. So what we need to do is make the flight mode switch whatever position it's in, be it normal, stunt one, stunt two, and then of course hold. We need to make that match up with what you see in the gyro screen there at the bottom of the uh, live screen. Right now you're seeing a 1. Um, consider that the uh, flight mode section. I know it says gyro, but consider it the flight mode switch. So right now I'm in normal mode on the transmitter, as you can see by the arrow on the uh, screen of my transmitter. We want the slider on the data pod to read normal as well. So in the case of my radio, I will adjust this value for normal mode down and you will see that one slide down and it will turn to an N right there. Now the proper value for normal mode in this radio is a negative 50%. Okay, so now I'm in normal mode on my transmitter the vortex is seeing normal mode as well. That's what you want to do regardless of the radio you're using. That's what you want. You want it to match up. So let's switch to stunt uh, one or idle one on your flight mode switch. And in this case, um, that happens to be 0% on my transmitter. Um, whatever transmitter you're using, if it's not stunt one or idle one, if you don't get a number one on that slider, you just need to adjust it either way until you get a 1 there. If you find that there's a range of an adjustment, try to put it in the middle of that range, okay? In this case on my radio it's 0%. Stunt 2, let's flip the um, flight mode switch into Stunt 2. You notice it didn't do anything, it stayed on 1. 
so I need to adjust the value of stunt2 until the slider in the data pod reads at number 2. Okay, you can see it read it there, but I'm going to increase it to a 50%, which is where it should be for this particular radio. Now you need to set up the hold switch. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave it in stunt 2. I'm going to hit hold and look what happens. It goes to a stunt 1. Now throttle goes to 0%, which it should, um, but the uh, flight mode switch on the gyro section there for the vortex does not. It goes back and forth between 2 and 1. Alright, so throttle hold switch on. I'm going to go to the throttle um, value in the transmitter and I'm going to adjust that until it reads H for hold. And you can see that it reads H right now, but the proper value for this particular radio is 100%. So now what you have is the vortex reading your transmitter properly, so when you flip the flight mode switch uh, and the hold switch on your transmitter, the vortex will be reading the values properly and will put itself into the corresponding modes. So right now our hold switch is on. I'm going to switch the uh, flight mode switch to normal mode. Now I'm going to flip out of hold and watch what happens. It goes down to N for normal mode. I'm going to toggle up to flight mode number one, stunt one or idle one. Here we go. It goes to one. I'm going to toggle to stunt two. It goes to two. Alright, I'm going to toggle to hold. It goes to hold. Now when I activate my flight mode switch to toggle through the flight modes, while the throttle hold switch is on, you notice that I don't get any change in flight modes. It stays in hold and that's what you want. Okay, so there. We're done with um, the transmitter setup. Um, if you have any questions about anything that went on in this video, go ahead and either ask the question on the video or refer to the um, setup guide that came with your Vortex. You could also check the SpartanRC.com knowledge base for the Vortex or you could log into HeliFreak and ask a question in the Spartan Vortex forum. But basically we're done with the transmitter setup. Um, in the next video we will get going with the next step in setup which is sensor and then we'll also do swash. Okay, we'll see you in the next video.